Welcome to Skipper 360. During our last harbor maneuver training, we tried out a method that I've read a lot about on the internet, and we wanted to see what this method can do. In this method, we use a so-called power triangle. And the advantage of the power triangle is that if we have crosswinds, we can use this triangle to get better to windward and stabilize the boat. Let's take a look at this situation on the diagram. We have about 15 knots of crosswind, which is quite a lot. If you want to get out of the box, and you can already see the difference here. Here, we have this power triangle. Whenever I have only one windward line, I have this problem. Many of you will have noticed that you need a lot of engine power to get the boat to windward. Because of course, only one line is a bad lever. With this power triangle, we now have the following advantages. We take the line from the middle cleat over the bollard and lead it back to the stern cleat. And this is the decisive advantage. It is important that this line can run freely around the bollard so that the forces can be distributed here. And we show you how this power triangle works in the live videos. And luckily, we also had about 15 knots of crosswind. What we're going to show you now is a power triangle, which we use a lot because we always have stronger crosswinds at our training center. You all know how difficult it is to get the boat upwind in a box when there's a crosswind, and you can see here how we set it up. We have a line from the center cleat over the bollard back to the rear stern cleat, and this distribution of forces firstly ensures a good pivot point at the center spring. This means that our boat is much easier to stabilize to windward. And the second advantage is that the stern stays nice and straight because the line goes back to the stern cleat. If I only use the center cleat here, the stern would be completely free at the back and could be swung to the left or right, and that can cause problems with neighboring boats. So let's take a look at this live video. Please bring the boat upwind for a moment. We've got about 10 to 12 knots here in the gusts, which means we're going to slowly ease the leeward line, rudder to port, and we'll see how fast the bow goes over the center jump. We can already put the rudder to starboard. Starboard, starboard. And we can see the stern coming in, and we can make a perfect parallel shift. And when we have turned far enough, we take the line tight. Now we have fixed the boat, and the boat stands perfectly. The great thing about the whole setup is that we can now release the lines just as quickly. The line is pulled in, and we can cast off. A second variant, where we can use this triangle very well, is when we have strong or stronger offshore winds. Here, for example, you can use the middle spring to moor at the jetty. However, the middle spring can cause problems if you are alone on board, because someone would have to climb over and tie the line. With this power triangle, we have two advantages at the same time. The first advantage is that we can prepare this line here and lay it comfortably over this bollard using the lasso throwing technique. Our power triangle forms here again, as shown in the previous videos, and I can now comfortably lay the boat against the bollard with the engine and rudder on land even at wind speeds of about 18 to 20 knots. The power triangle ensures that the boat is very stable here, and the stern can't swing as much as with the center jump, for example. Let's have a look at the live video. Here we have driven with the stern against the jetty. You can see that the gap is also relatively small, and we drive with stern to at almost 90 degrees to the jetty and have already prepared our power triangle. So from the center cleat to the stern cleat. And here we have the lasso throwing technique. We try to hit the bollard outside and then slowly drive into the line and stabilize the power triangle. So we now throw the line over the bollard and we see that we are now very slowly 
creating the tension. We can also let ourselves drift with the wind. We have about 5 to 10 knots. As soon as the line is fixed, we no longer release this tension. We now steer towards the jetty, and with the throttle and rudder, we can now put the boat on the jetty. Here too, we can see that there is a mooring line in the water. And because we have the power triangle here at the stern line, the stern doesn't turn outwards. That's another advantage. We can now see beautifully how the forces are automatically distributed here, i.e., the line automatically distributes the load. We have now set ourselves a task. We want to shorten the line, so in case it gets too tight at the front, we stop the boat briefly and reverse slightly. There's no danger because the wind is pushing the boat away from the pier. And now we tighten the line again and slowly drive into the line. We have now gained a good two to three meters forward. And now we've got the rudder back to the jetty, which means I can move the boat in the right direction. It's important that once the boat is moored here at the jetty, we don't change the throttle and rudder until we have deployed the other lines. Otherwise, the boat would become unstable again. Yes, I hope you enjoyed this video, and you can see that we are always trying new things, and we will also incorporate this technique into our skipper trainings.